What's good, my family? In today's video, we're going to look at Pythagorean theorem and how to solve when we have quadratic equations as the side length. When we're dealing with Pythagorean theorem and quadratic equations, family, we have to make sure we expand each side correctly. So once we go in, right, we identify each side, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? We know this is a, b. If we flip those two around, we'll still get the correct answer, but we have to make sure that the hypotenuse c squared is correct. So once we go in and we set this up, right, we have x to the second power plus 2x plus 2 to the second power is equal to 3x minus 2 to the second power. So sometimes students will get these type of problems wrong because they take everything to the second power incorrectly. If you get 4x plus 4 or 9x plus 4, we did the wrong thing. What we have to do is write the binomial out and then we need to FOIL, right? So when I FOIL with 2x, so what's in the parentheses, I'm gonna get 4x squared plus 4x. Then when I repeat that process with just a two, I'm gonna get 4x plus four again. So now once I clean this up, we have x squared plus 4x squared plus eight x plus four is equal to. And now we could go back and expand this to the second power. So we do the same process. Expand this binomial and FOIL. So once I do that, I'm going to get 9x squared minus 6x. Then I go over to 2, and I'm going to do the same thing and distribute. So I'm going to get minus 6x again plus 4. All right, so after we combine these two uh, like terms, this is what we should have. Now at this step, family, we took everything correctly to the second power. And we can now start combining our like terms. So what I'm going to want to do is just add these two. So this turns into 5x squared plus 8x plus 4 is equal to 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 5x from both sides. 5x squared, that is. Because I want to keep x squared positive. So once I do that, I'm going to have 8x plus 4 is equal to 4x squared minus 12x plus 4. So now, combine like terms again, I'm going to subtract 8x. So we have 4 is equal to 4x squared minus 20x plus 4, right? And just remember, at this point of the equation, we have a quadratic equation. We're trying to get set it equal to 0 so we can solve because we're going to have to factor to solve. Subtract 4, subtract 4. So now we have 0 is equal to 4x squared minus 20x. Now at this step, this is when we want to factor. OK, so what I'm going to do is kind of rearrange this equation and put is equal to zero at the end because I like my equation set up like that. So now let's switch colors. We're factoring this. So I'm going to take out a greatest common factor of 4x. Once I take that out, I'm going to have x minus 5 is equal to zero. So now we set both factors equal to zero like a regular quadratic equation. 4x is equal to 0, we know that this is not going to be a correct answer. x cannot be 0 in this instance, right? And when we do x minus 5 is equal to 0, we know x is equal to 5. So we, now we know that x is equal to 5, we need to plug this back in. But before we get there, one major tip. This is another place where I see students make mistakes. So let's say we had something like this, right? Let's give some space. So let's say we had x squared minus 2x minus 8. Let's say this was the quadratic equation, right? Set equal to 0. And we get x minus 4 times x plus 2. That should give us the correct factoring. Once we set both of these equal to 0, 
we'll get x is equal to 4. And then the second factor, when we set it equal to 0, x is equal to negative 2. Why did Mr. Peters bring this up? Because when we're dealing with the side length of triangles, x is equal to negative 2, this would be an extraneous solution because we can't have a side length be negative. So we would have to focus on the positive side length. Didn't happen in this problem, but if it does happen, please be mindful. All right, so now we go back in and we're going to substitute. So once I go in, I know that this side is 5 because that's just, that's what x is, is 5. This side is 2 times 5 plus 2. So this is 10 plus 2. This side is 12. And then once we do the third side, 3 times 5 minus 2, we get 15 minus 2, which is 13. Now, how can we determine or check to see if this is actually correct? I got you, family. So what we're going to do is use the Pythagorean theorem again, meaning 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. If this is a true statement, then we know the answer is correct. If not, then we probably have the answer wrong. So we have 25 plus 144 is equal to, I want to say 169, right? When we combine these, let's see, what do we get? 9, 6, 1, yep. We know that each side is going to be equal to each other, so we know that this is correct. So when you're dealing with Pythagorean theorem and quadratic equations family, this is how you would solve. Don't forget about that extraneous solution or that side that may be negative. We can't have that. If this video was helpful for you, smash the like button for us. Subscribe to the channel and leave comments down below if you had questions on this video or if there's other videos you would like to see on our channel. Thank you guys so much for watching Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.